So it seems some of you have had issues installing Replay Mod and FFmpeg altogether. So this is the first part we will go over. I've been out for a bit due to school, but I'm back and ready to show you the second part of how to install Replay Mod to create edits. Firstly, there's a newer way to install FFmpeg. The old way was just really old and really outdated and also really tedious, so there's a new way to do things. All you have to do is extract FFmpeg once you've downloaded it, which the link will be in the description, and drop it in your .minecraft folder. Pretty simple. For those of you who don't know how to get into your .minecraft folder, all you need to do is press the Windows and R key and it'll take you to the Run tab. Then type in %appdata% and open the .minecraft folder, and then just put FFmpeg in there. The next thing we're going to talk about is the Keyframe Presets feature. This feature is really useful for when you finish making camera paths. If you finish one, go in your controls and search for the keyframe preset keybind. Once you know what it is, click and it'll bring up a tab. This tab basically saves all of your keyframe camera paths, so if you were to clear keyframes, you can reapply them from this window. To save a keyframe, press save as, and then the name for the camera path. To load it back in once you've gotten rid of it, just open the keyframe preset window. If you have a camera path already on the timeline when loading, it'll delete the current path on the timeline and replace it with the new keyframes. This keyframe preset feature is also super helpful for rendering. Once you finish putting all of your camera paths in the keyframe preset menu, you can add them all to the render queue. The way the render queue works is you go in keyframe presets and select the camera path you want to render. You can open render queue again and add the camera path and then go back to the keyframe preset menu and add another camera path, and then back and forth and back and forth. This is super useful because not only can you render multiple frags instead of doing them each individually, but you can also render them all out in a shader that you like, and then re-render them with a depth map right after. It's great because normally people make one camera path, render it, and then continue, but this allows you to bulk make camera paths quickly. Next, we have the importance of Minecraft depth. Most games like first person shooters, Modern Warfare 3, Black Ops 2, have a depth map shader that you can use. First, I'll explain what depth is. It's basically editing a certain distance. You can use the depth map, as shown here, to add effects to the background and foreground of the image. You can use Crushed Pixels video to find the download link, or it'll be in the description. One last thing you should know about the depth map is poor particle tracking. The way Minecraft particles are made, they're random every time you load in a world. Meaning in replay mod, there are millions of different possibilities for particles in game. If someone splashes a potion, the depth map will sort of mess up around the area. Since for depth map, the potion particle is in a different place. Since there are multiple outcomes for the particle position. To simplify what I just said, particles mess up a bit, but not too much. The second to last thing we're going to talk about is a Minecraft BSL shader. BSL is a customizable shader that you can use. If you wish to sync your edit to a song, you can make the mood using shaders. If the song is in a fiery sunset, you can edit the BSL shaders to make a sunset type shader. These shaders are amazing because you can customize it to be anything you want or just leave it as is. Lastly, but definitely not least, if you watched maybe some of my edits or any made in universe editing, you must know that uh, this bow game mode called OITC, or One in the Chamber, uh, is actually really dead. Popular editor Mintix streams OITC sometimes, and it's a fun server that mimics the Call of Duty one shot one kill game mode. It's a relatively old server, and it's hard to get demos and clips if no one plays, so get out there and record some demos. Lastly, I want to apologize for not making content for two months. I had a lot of schoolwork to catch up on, and I also apologize if this tutorial sounds super over-exaggerated and cringy. I'm reading this off a script I wrote in language arts class. <laughs> Thanks for watching the tutorial. If you have any questions, please ask in the comments, and I'll try my best to answer as many as I can. And yeah, have a good day. See ya.